Hello, I'm Tim Tyler from Cobalt Banker Realty in Maplewood, New Jersey. You may be wondering about buying a home. What is an inspection? Do I need one? Maybe if I'm selling a home, do I need an inspection? Well, I've brought on an expert here to talk with me today, David Turner from Pillar to Post. Uh, David, hello. Hello, how are you, Tim? I'm good, I'm good. Start off with David, what is a home inspection? A home inspection is an objective visual examination of the physical structure and systems of the home from the roof to the foundation. On average, a single family home inspection usually takes two to four hours to complete, although this is heavily dependent on the size and the condition of the home. After the home inspection process, the inspector will send the client the inspection report often within 24 to 48 hours that covers their findings, complete with pictures, analysis, and recommendations. That's a pretty straightforward description. What does an inspection cover? And as a buyer, why should I get one? Okay, very good question. The standard home inspector report will cover the condition of the home's heating systems, central air conditioning systems, temperature permitting, interior plumbing systems, electrical systems, the roof, the attic, visible insulation, walls, ceilings, floors, windows, and doors, and the foundation, basement, and structural components. Buying a home could be the largest single investment a home buyer will ever make. To minimize unpleasant surprises and unexpected difficulties, the home buyers should strive to learn as much as they can about the home before they buy it. A home inspection may identify the need for major repairs or building oversights, as well as the need for maintenance to keep, to keep the home in good shape. Though the home in, through the home inspection process, home buyers will have a better understanding about their prospective house, which may allow them to make decisions with confidence. That's great. I noticed you, you indicate here uh, temperature permitting. So for an AC system, what typically is the temperature that you need it to be in order to test that? So the temperature should be at night above 65 degrees for 72 hours. So for example, but roughly three days of temperatures higher than 65 degrees Fahrenheit allows us to test the, uh, the air conditioner uh, system because in the, in the air condenser, which is on the outside of the home, it is affected by the temperatures on the outside. And if the, um, if the components of the condenser are too cold, turning it on prematurely could damage the condenser. Okay. Is there an alternative or is there something that a homeowner can do if they are buying a home, say, in the wintertime? Well, there's a, there's a number of alternatives. One is they, can, they could contact an HVAC technician. They have the tools and the equipment to actually heat up uh, the air conditioning condenser in order to test it. They also have specialized equipment to determine whether or not the condenser is in good order and that the, the Freon or the, or the 410A coolant is running through the pipes correctly. They can also put money in escrow. So for example, if, there, if it's completely unknown as to whether or not the air conditioning system is gonna work six months later after you purchase a home, you could ask your attorney to put money in escrow in order to replace the air conditioning system should that be necessary. That's a negotiation that you have to make between yourselves and the seller. Excellent advice there, thank you. Mm -hmm. What red flags should a buyer look for before making an offer? You know, they've come into a house, they think it's really good, but you know, they don't necessarily want to put out money for an inspection if there are some things that they could see off the bat that they know they should steer. Yeah, um, so you know, potential red flags that can end that, that can arise during a home inspection or even uh, a buyer walking through a home, you know, evidence of water damage, structural defects, problem with the plumbing or the electrical systems, and mold and pest infestation. They might not be able to see these at first glance, but we can talk a little bit about how they can do that. You know, the presence of one or more of these issues could really be a deal breaker for some buyers. So for example, if you see water stains in the ceiling, there's a, there's a good chance that the, either the bathroom above or some pipes or something's coming from the outside. It could be coming from the roof. If you see water in the basement, you wanna know why is there water in the basement? Is this a frequent problem? Is this just a seasonal problem? Basements are not waterproof, they're damp proof, but you know, water does come in. If you see um, the lights are flickering when you, when you check a, a light switch, or you notice there's a lot of electrical cords and power strips throughout the house when you're visiting the home, that's a sign of an electrical problem in the home, maybe not enough service. If you flush the toilets or run the sinks and you see that the sinks are backing up and the toilets are making a noise, air is bubbling out, or you get all kinds of 
discoloration of the water coming through the faucets, there's a problem with the plumbing system. So these are just typical things you can see by yourself without an inspector. Great. Definitely. We'll uh, keep an eye on that myself too, so I can point it out <laughs> to potential buyers. Good. What's the most common issue you come across in an inspection? So we mentioned water previously, but it is water. Water is the number one most common issue home inspectors come across when inspecting a home. Water damage to the structure has been, has been the most damaging and costly, causing foundation problems, rot, and the dreaded mold. So you know, homes are built out of wood. And, uh, you know, there's, there's vinyl and there's brick and there's other kinds of materials that are, that are also at a home. But, but for the most part, most homes in the United States are, have a wood you know, infrastructure. And so if moisture gets behind the vinyl, behind the brick, behind any other kind of siding, gets, you know, comes all across the downspouts, throws the gutters and comes into the, into the attic through poor, poor roof covering. Once water gets into the house, and if it continues to get into the house, you're going to have serious structural issues later on. Okay. So what is the most serious or dangerous thing you've ever encountered? And there's no doubt that uh, about the structural problems with the top of the list uh, of structural integrity of the home for, and super important for any buyer. Um, you know, if, if uh, most of the inspections that I'm doing these days are as is inspections, but the attorneys are putting in, putting into the, uh, the, the negotiated documents, something about structural, right? So they say, well, it's as is except for structural. So they still want the structural elements to be seriously looked at and they want them to be evaluated by a home inspector and they want the home inspector to be able to tell the buyer whether or not there's a structural issue. So the foundation of your home is perhaps the most critical piece of what makes it structurally sound. To retain the structural integrity, it must be in good shape. Uh, for the rest of the house, the frames, the walls, the windows, everything in working order. And if there's a problem, uh, it, it's severe enough. That if I tell the client that the problem is severe enough, the next step is to contact a structural engineer. Yeah. While the home inspector may be able to identify a structural issue, we're not qualified to determine what cause is or even what the solution is. So that would be a structural engineer to do that. Have you ever been in a house where you thought, Maybe it's not so such a good idea for us to even be in here. <laughs> I have. Yes, I, yes, I have. Yeah. Oh, boy. <laughs> yes. So if someone's thinking of selling their home, is it a good idea for them to have a, a home inspection before they put it on the market? It is, absolutely. A homeowner is planning to sell their home. You know, the inspection can give them the opportunity to make repairs and put the house in a better selling condition. You know, obviously, the market conditions of the past few years have been in favor of the sellers. So sellers have had an easy go of it, um, not having to repair as many things that they might have had to repair in, in different market conditions. But that doesn't mean that they shouldn't know what's going on with their home. Basically, uh, you know, if something comes up that could possibly stop the deal in midstream, it's because they were not informed. So if, for example, their HVAC system is not functioning correctly, or there's a serious problem in their electrical panel, and they've got the perfect buyer, they got a great offer, and every well-qualified buyer, everything's moving smoothly, timetables are correct, the appraisal was done, the septic inspection came back, everything's great, everything's wonderful, and all of a sudden a home inspector says to the buyer, well, unfortunately, the electrical panel in the garage is an outdated version of a panel that's about 50 years old and it's been flagged as best causing fires in, in most homes. And, and because of its age, it's a serious problem. The buyer and the seller may not agree on, on what to do about that. And, that. and they just spent three months working on a deal that is gonna go nowhere. I know that different members of our profession have different opinions on this. I tend to agree with you that it is a good idea to have some kind of an inspection to know what it, the condition of the home is before you put it on the market. Mm -hmm. Obviously, the buyer is likely to have an inspection, so it's not like you're going to be able to hide anything. Uh, and, and as you said, you know, it's better to know beforehand and either repair or price your home for that specific issue. Exactly. Beforehand. I think another, another aspect of that, Tim, this is very important, is if you are a, a, a seller, and you know your, your home has problems uh, and, and you have had a home inspection done by, by a qualified home inspector and he's given you an idea is these are the things that you should probably take care of before you put your home on the market. But unfortunately, you don't have the money to do that. You can go out and get quotes. You know, let's say let's say the house, the home needs a new roof. 
go out and get a quote from a good roofing company and one or two or three, however many quotes you want to get. So when it comes down to times to negotiate, you can tell the buyer, you can say, well, I know that I have a problem with the roof and I don't have a problem with the, with the plumbing system and the electrical system. And here are three quotes from, from vendors that I, that I recently got. And so we're willing to either adjust our price or we built this into our, into our offering price. We know what it's going to cost to fix. And so we just want to share this with you so you're, you're informed as well. And that does two things. It stops the buyer from, from exaggerating the price of what it would cost to fix that problem, right? And that does happen sometimes. But it also gives the buyer some assurance that you already know what's going on and you're participating, you're actively participating in helping them to purchase that home. You're helping them to have confident home ownership. That's important. Yes, indeed. I agree. I agree. Well, I want to thank you uh, for joining us today. Uh, and uh, if somebody wanted to get an inspection done, how would they, how would they reach out to you? Well, my phone number is 908-777-8837, or they could email me at uh, david.turner at pillartopost.com. My cell phone number is also available for a text, which is 908-809-2866. Happy to help anybody who wants to reach out to me. And uh, I am Tim Tyler, Cobo Banker Realty in Maplewood, New Jersey. If you're thinking of buying a home, you can reach out to me at 973-462-4079.